Hello and welcome to this new module, new section on pricing and incentive design and development and the first lecture of that in this course on marketing strategy. So in this module what we will do is to help you understand in depth how can you design and develop pricing and incentives of your offering. And in the, we will talk about uh, the three aspects of pricing development. First, we will take a look at in this lecture about pricing development. Then we will talk about a process to set pricing. And there are some decisions related to product mix pricing that you may be facing. And in next few lectures, after the three lectures, we will talk about incentives design and development. So let's take a look at understanding the pricing first. So Pricing, price has operated as a major element in a buyer's choice. It has always been a major choice, a major element in a buyer's choice. However, with internet happening over the last 25 years, uh, it has uh, become more important, especially with the ways buyers and sellers have interacted. And now it is possible for buyers to make instant price comparison across many, many, many vendors on the internet. Now, using the mobile devices, you and the customers can make price comparisons very easily in the store, outside the stores, and in store particularly before they buy. And uh, they pressurize or they negotiate with the retailer to match the best price, or they go, the, they either threaten or actually go and buy elsewhere. So a new buyer behavior that is emerging is that uh, price is checked on the point of purchase and if the price is offered better at some other place people go there at the same time apart from the buyers uh, sellers have also been enabled to get a better pricing to optimize their pricing now how, how is that happening is the sellers can now monitor market demand and accordingly price so you can know what are the, how many people are willing to buy at a particular point of time especially let's say in uber car services so at the time there are many more buyers than the available number of cabs. Uber does into what is called a surge pricing. Companies are now also are able to offer tailored sales promotion based on the profit of a given market segment because you can get a better idea of the pricing possibilities, pricing capabilities of a segment. Now in terms of pricing the in the smaller companies, the owner still does set the prices, and in, but in the larger companies, the owners or the big, uh, the top management basically sets the policies, objectives, and uh, the actual pricing is uh, left to the line managers uh, with uh, the requirement that they get approval from the top management. So that's how the pricing happens today. Let's look at some of the underlying consumer psychology in pricing. Uh, price information is processed uh, very actively by the consumers and uh, they interpret it in the context of what they have bought earlier, uh, the, the, what is the formal pricing that has been communicated, informal information on the pricing, what is the pricing in the points of purchase, online and with many other factors. So the processing, there are a lot many information available and the consumers actively process them. Now the decisions to buy are based on, not on as much on what is the actual price, but what is the perceived price versus the marketeer stated price. If you have a stated price and the consumer's perceived price is lower than your stated price, then uh, they, you have a better chance of being bought. Uh, now, if they also, consumers also have in terms of their psychology, a lower threshold price below which if your product is priced, it will be seen as an inferior product quality. And at the same time, there's an upper price, hold, price threshold above which the prices are seen as very expensive and uh, the value for money is questioned that the product may not be bought on account of that. There are three aspects of psychology of pricing and let's look at each of these in a little more detail as we go forward. So 
So the three things are what is called reference prices, wage pricing and pricing queues. Let's look at each of these and spend some time in looking at this in detail. So what is reference pricing? The consumers, you know, compare their observed prices with internal or external reference. And that is what is called reference prices. So the prices are referred to something. What they see is referred to something internal or external. Now, these can be many things. The reference prices can be a fair price someone publishes, a typical price, a last price paid by you or a customer, upper price, bound price, lower bound price. Competitor's price are very uh, often used as reference price because competitor is a frame of reference for us, uh, for you as a brand, right? Expected future prices and what are the discounted prices? So there are a variety of reference prices that you need to know and see which is being used by consumers as a reference price. Now consumers use one or more of these uh, frame of reference when they perceive when the, the, what they have observed as price varies differently from very stated prices. Right? So if your price is ten dollars and if consumers perceive prices it is coming at 12, 14 rupees and dollars, then they would go out and walk and see what are the competitors' price versus uh, the 14 what they see. Now, uh, when the prices perceived price is lower than stated price, that has a greater impact on purchase likelihood versus uh, when it is higher. And uh, the expectation of the consumer also plays a key role in the pricing response. If the consumer is expecting by uh, walking into store and uh, expecting to pay $15 and they actually find a price of $12, they're likely to buy very quickly. And instead of that, if they find actual price is $20 versus the expectation. So it's about all about the expectation, the management of expectation, even in pricing. Let's look at image pricing. What is image pricing and how, what is its implication on pricing? Now, the price is also used as indicator of quality. Uh, it's uh, especially in the categories that uh, are ego sensitive, such as perfumes, expensive cars, designer clothing. And uh, also when the information about the true quality is not available. When the true quality information is available, the pricing becomes a less significant factor of the quality because you get actually you can understand the quality, you can assess the quality of the product. Uh, some brands adopt exclusivity with scarcity to signify, signify uniqueness and justify premium price, especially the luxury goods. As you will see in the Louis Vuitton cases, that they create this exclusivity and somewhat scarcity to, to maintain the premium pricing. What are the pricing cues? Uh, now, pricing, there are many believe that a pricing ending with number nine uh, is the right thing to do uh, because there's a mental break, price break at higher prices in the consumer's mind. Now, who should use this uh, tactic of uh, ending the price with nine, especially the companies who want to compete on price, not the companies that you want to that you want to keep premium pricing image. Uh, also, the sales sign next to prices can increase demand if it is not overused. Now, more in these uh, in that tactics are more effective when consumer price knowledge is poor and when they purchase items infrequently or are new to category. And uh, the product designs vary over a period of time. Uh, or, or the prices are seasonal or the quality or sizes vary across stores. So if there is uncertainty about the quality, availability, etc., then the pricing plays more important role. They are, they are obviously less effective, more they are used, these pricing cues that we are talking about. So these are some of the things that need to understand about psychology of pricing. So having looked at and understood pricing in some detail, what do we do next? So in the next, we will go through a process of setting the price uh, and we will take you through that process in detail. So thank you so much for watching this uh, first lecture in pricing and incentive design and development. I hope you're beginning to learn new things again, beginning to enjoy. And I do look forward to see you again in the next lecture.